You've probably heard people say, usually in a rather offhand manner, that all cars look alike. Now, certainly there's a style trend, but we think the new car buyer will find many appearance differences when he takes a second close look. We think, too, that it's a mistake to assume that all cars ride, drive, and handle alike. In fact, we know there are important differences which can and should be experienced by any prospective new car buyer before he signs an order. Now, it's true, of course, that a leader will always have imitators. And so there are bound to be certain similarities in styling and engineering features among the various makes of cars. However, for advanced styling, engineering, and all the rest, you have to look to the leader. And again, in 1959, as in the past, the qualities of leadership are mostly to be found in Dodge. Let's see why. By taking a good, close look at the Dodge Coronet and the Buick LeSabre. Representative of Dodge's classic styling is the four-door hardtop. Note the low, clean hood line in perfect balance with a trim, swept-wing fender line. Ornamentation, or body trim, is simplicity itself, accenting the car's long, clean lines and giving it the overall look of complete unity that all designers strive for. Top it off with a slim roof line. Add a big contoured windshield. Then, with an eye to proportion, balance, and visibility, add the wraparound rear window. And you have Dodge, the car with classically beautiful lines, the model for the imitators. Strange that only a short time ago, the imitators pointed to Dodge styling and called it extreme, too advanced. But they followed Dodge's lead, and now, here is Buick riding the wave of the future along with the rest of the industry. But along with the rest, it's as if instructions had gone out. Copy Dodge, but make it different. Give the fins a different twist. In fact, build fins on all four corners. Keep the trim simple, like Dodge, but bend it in a different direction. Copy the compound windshield, but not exactly. And so on and on to an end result which we think is an improvement on the traditional boxy, squared off, bulbous Buick we were all accustomed to. Still, on examining Buick's 1959 styling in detail, we wonder if the underlying concept might not be expressed as something old, something new, something borrowed, something Buick. For instance, something old, and borrowed for that matter, would seem to be the Studebaker type rear window. Late 1940s, wasn't it? In the four-door sedan, however, Buick's rear window styling is more modern, more like that of Dodge. Something new in Buick are fins on the front fender, flared out over the dual headlights. The latter, of course, are a Dodge idea, although in Dodge, they're arranged horizontally. At any rate, it's again a case of copying Dodge, but not too exactly. Borrowed is the idea of rear fender fins. But again, it was a case of making them look different. Incidentally, it's in this particular area that we feel those who copy Dodge are most handicapped. You see, we feel there's something ideal in Dodge's swept wing design. We think the Dodge fender fins, for example, are ideal in shape, angle, and height. In fact, in their total relation to the rest of the car. Ideal is a strong word, and we hasten to add that Dodge had the advantage of getting there first and staking the best claim. Those who follow, or those who imitate, are forced into variations of the ideal because they don't want to copy Dodge exactly. However, Dodge would be the first to say that styling is a matter of opinion. At the same time, we feel that where there are similarities in Dodge and Buick styling, many people will prefer the original to the copy. Of course, there are other reasons for preferring Dodge, and among the most important are Dodge's interior comfort dimensions. And as between Dodge four-door hardtops and Dodge sedans, you might just as well toss a coin, because both Dodge models top Buick in 12 out of 16 interior ruminous dimensions. Dodge takes the lead right away with bigger door openings, both front and rear, for easier getting in and out. 
Incidentally, in Dodge, notice that in the door opening, there's no bruise hazard, such as the one formed by the base of the windshield post in Buick. In front and rear headroom, both Dodges top Buick. As for shoulder room, there's more in both Dodges, and that's mighty important when there are three in a seat. Dodge higher front seats provide more support under the thighs. Now, this is an important comfort factor, especially to the driver after an hour or so behind the wheel. Also in Dodge, there's about 27% more lap room between the steering wheel and the seat cushion. Buick's lower front seat gives inadequate thigh support, and the driver's legs are literally squeezed between the steering wheel and seat cushion. In addition to being uncomfortable, it's difficult for the driver to shift his foot from the accelerator to the brake pedal. And there's more room to stretch your legs in a Dodge, whether you're the driver or a passenger. In Dodge's rear compartment, there's plenty of foot room for the passengers seated next to the door. But in Buick, notice how the shelf just inside the rear door would make it difficult for the passenger seated there to arrange his feet comfortably. In the Dodge rear compartment, the passenger in the middle is quite comfortable with a minimum of interference from the drive shaft tunnel. But in Buick, just look at the interference caused by that hump over the drive shaft. Getting out of the Buick rear compartment is a real problem. The low seat, the deep well, and the wide shelf make it impossible to simply swing one's feet and legs out easily and gracefully as in Dodge. Note, too, how the narrower Buick door opening catches this passenger's side and shoulder. The second stage in getting out of Buick is to drag the leg, which was temporarily left behind for adequate balance and support, up and over the wide shelf. As for the Dodge passenger, she's already out of the car. This isn't exaggerated, and anyone considering both Dodge and Buick should try it. Ask your prospects to try the exclusive swing-out swivel seat which swings to the out position at the touch of a lever. Then all they have to do is sit down and swing the seat back to the in position where it latches automatically. In this picture, by the way, the center armrest is up, so there's plenty of room for three passengers up front. Here it's shown in the down position. This armrest, which comes with the optional swivel seats, is typical of the extra luxury you can get in Dodge, but not in Buick. Compare Dodge's 38.6 cubic feet of trunk space to Buick's 30.2 cubic feet. The Dodge lid opening is higher and wider, too, for easier loading and unloading. And note that Dodge's spare tire does not interfere with usable space, while Buick still does. Anyway, all that Dodge luggage room makes us think of vacation time. And thinking of vacation time makes some people think of a long, wearisome drive with all the pleasure and relaxation postponed until they get there. But in Dodge, the fun and relaxation begin immediately, as we'll see after the record has been turned. Whether you're vacation bound or wherever you're going, you get torsion air ride in every Dodge. It's the best ride on the road at any price, but in Dodge, it doesn't cost a cent extra. It's built in. With torsion springs up front, leaf springs in the rear mounted close to the rear wheels, and Oroflow shock absorbers to control spring action exactly, the Dodge ride is soft, smooth, level, stable, and controlled. Now, these descriptive words have definite meaning, for each refers to a benefit which can be demonstrated on the road. Buick, no doubt, will use similar adjectives, but Buick's actual ride has always been somewhat less impressive than phrases used to describe it. And that holds true this year because there have been few, if any, mechanical changes in Buick's suspension for 1959. Just as in past years, Buick's standard suspension system is built around four old-fashioned coil springs. And as in the past, these coil springs are weak as compared with Dodge torsion springs. Evidence of this is the way the Buick front left fender pulls up, as you see here, when the engine is gunned, as in accelerating from a standing start. Now this happens, you see, because the coil spring isn't strong enough to counteract engine acceleration. This inherent weakness of Buick's coil springs is just one reason why the Buick ride 
can't measure up to Dodge's torsion air ride. The place to prove it, of course, is on the road. It's on the road, too, that Dodge's superior performance can be demonstrated. Let's see what Dodge offers as compared to Buick. The Dodge Coronet is powered by a brand new 255 horsepower Red Ram V8 engine. This big engine is standard equipment with either manual or automatic transmission. Buick's standard engine with manual transmission is the 210 horsepower Wildcat V8. With extra cost automatic transmission, the Buick buyer gets a 250 horsepower engine. But this is still five horsepower short of Dodge. What can the Buick buyer do about it? Well, an extra cost power package will bring the Buick engine up to 300 horsepower. And at extra cost, the LeSabre can be equipped with triple turbine transmission. However, if the prospect is really performance minded, he'll find that the Dodge D500 or Super D500 engines are tops with 320 and 345 horsepower respectively. Either of these engines is optional in Dodge with torque flight transmission and just can't be matched by any combination of engine and transmission that Buick has to offer. But for the prospect who wants big car prestige and comfort with maximum operating economy at low initial cost, Dodge offers the dependable Getaway 6, the only six-cylinder engine in the big car field. Next, let's compare automatic transmissions. Dodge's automatic transmissions use power efficiently because the power is transmitted through both a torque converter and gears. Buick's automatic transmissions, using a torque converter only, waste power through slippage. Optional in Dodge Coronet are either push-button power flight or push-button torque flight. To operate either, merely depress the neutral button, then turn the key to start the engine. Then push the drive button and accelerate at will. With power flight, there's just one smooth, quiet, automatic shift from low to drive. With torque flight, the shift is from low to intermediate to drive. And both Dodge transmissions are water-cooled this year for quieter, more efficient operation. Buick's twin turbine transmission is the same old Dynaflow under a new name. Otherwise, nothing has changed, and Buick's acceleration is no better than it ever was. The same familiar lever operation is in its same familiar place on the steering column. The same familiar park position is there, and in the owner's manual is the same familiar warning about possible damage to the transmission if the parking lock is engaged while the car is in motion. With Buick's twin turbine transmission, notice that in order to shift to reverse, it's necessary to move the lever through both drive and low range. Unless the driver exercises care, his Buick may move forward. You can find evidence of the damage that may result in many a Buick owner's garage. With triple turbine transmission, if the car is started in the park position, it's necessary to move the lever through reverse to get to drive range. The hazard here, unless the driver uses deliberate care, is that the Buick may move backward. Dodge has a powerful, positive, independent parking brake. That's why the need for a park position on the transmission, together with the risk of damage that goes with the park position, is eliminated in Dodge. Another important advantage of Dodge's independent parking brake is that it's actually an additional braking system, completely independent of the service brakes. In Buick, if the service brakes are gone, all braking is gone. Now, suppose the Buick-minded prospect wants to talk service brakes. Suppose he points out to a Dodge salesman, just as Buick Advertising and Buick Salesman have been pointing out to him, that Buick has aluminum brake drums in its front wheels. The average prospect will believe this means greater stopping power for Buick. A Dodge salesman can prove that this is not so by explaining that the sole function of aluminum drums is to dissipate heat rapidly, particularly the excessive heat generated in Buick brakes on panic stops, such as this one. What it boils down to is that Buick uses aluminum drums to correct a fault, 
the brake fade, which was characteristic in Buick in the past whenever panic-stopping power was demanded. A Dodge salesman can point out the facts. Buick's brake design has not been changed or improved. Buick's brake lining area has not been increased. And Buick's stopping power has not been improved. Then he can explain that Dodge brakes provide better stopping power and that this is a fact which has been proved in tests against Buick. And he can explain the reason. The fact that brakes on Dodge sedans and two-door hardtops have 29.3% more lining area, and on the heavier four-door hardtops, station wagons and convertibles, they have 43.7% more. Also, in Dodge brakes, a flexible web assures total contact every time the brakes are applied. And because heat dissipation has not been a problem in Dodge brakes, aluminum drums are not necessary as they are in Buick. There are so many extra value features in Dodge as compared with Buick, it's just impossible to describe all of them, but for a few honorable mentions. In the safety department, it's Dodge safety rim wheels against Buick's ordinary rims. Dodge 16-inch windshield wiper blades versus Buick's 15-inch blades. Dodge's rotary door latch with a positive safety interlock compared with Buick's ordinary door latch. In the beauty department, Dodge's body finish is the amazing new Luster Bond high-baked enamel, harder, smoother, tougher than Buick's lacquer. Dodge Luster Bond is made that way to stay beautiful longer. Now we talked about Dodge's push-button transmission, but let's give honorable mention to Dodge's push-button heater and air conditioning controls and radio controls. They all add up to the reason Dodge is called the first true push-button automobile. And so you have Dodge Coronet and Buick LeSabre. One the leader, the other one of many imitators. To convince your prospect of Dodge's leadership, point to Dodge's better styling. It's more luxurious, more spacious interiors. The luxury is there to be seen. The extra roominess can be measured if need be. Point to the reasons for Dodge's superior ride, performance, and safety features. But remember that these are the features that call for the kind of proof that only a thoroughgoing demonstration drive can provide. So invite your prospect, who's also considering Buick LeSabre, to ride and drive Dodge. And give him a chance to discover for himself that the best choice for 59 is Dodge. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.